Well, hello guys and welcome back to the channel. It's the Sketch Monkey here and I hope you have your coffee or your hot beverage and maybe a few snacks right now in front of you because this might be a long video. This video is all about the W Motors Fenir Super Sport and we're gonna talk about the design of it and the overall styling, what I like and what I don't like about styling and then we of course are going to redesign the car if we can <laughs> it's going to be a challenge with this one but we're gonna try and do it anyway so let's jump in and let's talk about this Fenrir Super Sport first of all let's cover some background of this W Motors company and the models that they have currently produced it was founded in 2012 being the first developer of high performance luxury sports cars that would based in the middle east it's based in dubai the company does everything in-house including design research and development and even manufacturing of their own cars w motors also performs automotive consultancy within its special project operations division in addition to developing its own supercars w motors developed the first vehicle for china-based sister company iconic motors and the, this was done with the iconic 7 which is a fully electric multi-purpose vehicle looking at the iconic 7 design you can definitely see w motors involvement and style with the sharp angular almost over styling cues and graphic layout of course of the front and rear light assembly if you look at the details you can definitely see some resemblance to both the lycan hypersport and the Fenir supersport in this iconic 7. w motors launched its first prototype model the lycan hypersport at the qatar international motor show in 2013. shortly thereafter the company moved its headquarters to Dubai. Another big step for the company happened in 2013 when Universal Studios ordered 12 like and hypersport stunt cars, 12 of them, to appear in the film Furious 7. One of them can be viewed right now at the W Motors Gallery in Dubai. It is the most expensive car ever featured in the Fast and Furious films, though the vehicles seen on the screen were obviously not the real $3.5 million cars, these were drivable stunt models rather than the production vehicles. The Lycan Hypersport's first pre-production model was introduced at the Dubai International Motor Show on October 5th of 2013. The production-ready model of this Lycan Hypersport officially went on sale about a year later in December of 2014, it was limited to only 7 units. The Hypersport was priced at $3.4 million and was manufactured by W Motors in Torino in Italy or Turin. Dubai and Abu Dhabi are known in the automotive world for their insane fleet of police cars, which include Lamborghinis, Ferraris, McLarens, and even a Bugatti Veyron. Well, since W Motors is based in Dubai, it was only a matter of time before we would see a hypersport police car. And of course, in June of 2015, the Abu Dhabi police purchased a Lycan hypersport to use as a police car. Nuts! W Motors had a three-person automotive design team as of 2012 when they started out. And these designers were all graduates from the transportation design program at Coventry University. The company's second model, the Fenir Supersport, which is what we're going to focus on in this redesign right here, or design talk, was introduced in November of 2015. The company claims that they have sold all seven of the like and hypersport units and has confirmed that the 10 Fenir Supersport Launch Editions series has also sold out. So these are the two kind of main models of uh, the W Motors company or brand. You have the Lycan Hypersport, the first one, which is powered by a flat six, 3.7 liter twin turbo mid engine developing 780 horsepower and 708 pound feet of torque. And with a zero to 60 time, of just 2.8 seconds with a top speed of 251 miles per hour. It features a holographic display and the LED headlights are made of titanium blades encrusted with diamonds in the front and in the rear you have sapphires integrated in the taillights. 
In 2013, W Motors announced it would manufacture a second line of supercars that was later unveiled as the 1.4 million Fenrir Supersport, named after Fenrir, a monstrous wolf in North mythology. The Fenrir was limited to 110 units total and was intended to be a high-performance sports car with more discreet luxury details compared to the first Lycan Hypersport. Not so sure about the discreetness of this design though. The Fenrir Supersport features a 4 liter twin turbo flat 6 with 900 horsepower and 811 pound feet of torque. And the 0 to 60 time here is 2.7 seconds with a top speed of 249 miles per hour and a curb weight of approximately 1200 kilos kilos or 2600 pounds it was unveiled at the 2015 dubai international motor show on november 29th of 2017 with the opening of the new w motors gallery in dubai the production version of the Fenrir Supersport was revealed with quite many changes from the concept version. So these are the two main models that we that everybody pretty much knows of when it comes to the W Motors. But they also made a one-off car called the Giaf by the special project division of W Motors. And this was a prototype police vehicle for the D Dubai government, originally we were referred to as Beast Patrol. <laughs> this was later renamed to Giaf by the Crown Prince of Dubai. And little is known regarding the te technical specifications of this vehicle, except that it's based on a Chevy Tahoe and that, is, uh, that the first vehicle is currently in use by the Dubai police. So if you're in Dubai and walking down the street, you might actually happen to see this Giath rolling down the street. So what about the future of W Motors here? Well, in February of 2020, W Motors revealed that they are currently working on an electric supercar nicknamed Wolfie. This EV is expected to cost between 600,000 to 900,000 US dollars, and they're planning to build more than 500 units of it. The car should be able to travel 280 miles on a single charge, pretty standard, with future developments pushing this past 620 miles. The car will be powered by four electric motors producing a total of 1600 horsepower, launching this car from 0 to 60 in less than two seconds. The car will be fully developed and produced in the United Arab Emirates at W Motors factory and will be ready as a pre-production car by the end of 2020 with production launch in early 2021. And now with that said, with the background of W Motors for you who don't know what this car is or the company behind it, let's jump in now and talk about the design. I'm going to sketch up all the things that I think are kind of off with this design. There is a major, major issue with it that I'm going to cover first. So let's jump into Photoshop now and let's talk about the Fenrir Supersport. So here we have it, the, the Fenrir Supersport in a slight front view. So to put it Mildly, if I were to be nice about this car, I would say I'm not a fan. If I were to be completely honest with you, I would call it grotesque. And the reason for that is that the fundamental issue with this car is not really something that is fixable with a quick fix. It's about the proportions of the car. And on top of that, you have this insane styling that looks like it was done by a first year transportation design student trying to figure out alias. For example, there are so many lines here that I don't even know where to start, honestly. It gives me a headache just looking at this car. And we have this line right here that is the fender that just abruptly stops here and then it goes into a new, new type of chamfer here on a different piece. And this creates this feeling that it was designed and built by taking stuff, a bunch of different random things for different cars, and just trying to assemble it and making it look like some sort of unified design. But what this fundamentally feels like to me is it feels like a kit 
car. It feels like it's been built, th that it's something else underneath and some amateur has taken, taken that car and try to come up with their own design on top of that car. That's just my thoughts on it. It's not the most positive things I have to say about this, but if I'm honest, that's just the way I feel about this car. And then we have all these sharp angles here. We have, for example, here, straight lines everywhere in combination with some interesting curvatures here, for example, and then you have this curvature here, that has it's not it doesn't know if you want to be straight or if you want to have a curvature to it like that so we kind of have to guess what the designers intent were with this part right here you can see that it it does have a slight curve to it but it's barely visible and you also have a very very thick c pillar here i admire the effort of w motors to come up with these cars pretty quickly from found being founded in 2012 and then releasing their first model in 2013 but it feels as if they rushed the design process of this car and there is so much to talk about here that you know let's just take this tiny detail here for example you have this interesting shape that goes like this of the front uh, bumper i guess we call it you can see that it goes here and it doesn't line up with this piece down here you see that these are off offset here i know these are tiny details that probably no one or the majority would not even think about but when you put all of these small details together and make everything and put put them all on one single car it all adds up and you can find these kind of weird things in this car all over this design you also have a chamfer here for some reason they just decided to cut this in half and make that a chamfer and also you have this line right here that completely makes it look like the rear is about to be detached or is kind of a weak part of the car that it's about to break from the rest of the body of the car. So let's have a look at the side view here just to keep going. The side view is where you look at the car if you wanna have a look at the proportions of it. So the thing here, it look, I mean, if we take away all the styling features, it looks a lot like an Aventador, uh, a Lamborghini Aventador, and that's not a bad thing. But then you add this, this over styled you know body of this car and it becomes a mess just look at this tiny detail here if we zoom in on this part it, th there are just too many lines that goes in one direction another thing i talk about in my videos is line flow and i think this car is the car that that lacks line flow the most of any car I've ever seen before. And it just doesn't have to be like that because it's a two-door sports car and two-door sports car are, cars are pretty easy to make beautiful looking, even if they're mid-engine cars. You also have these huge fenders, both front and rear, and it makes it look almost cartoonish in its proportions. I think this this fender right here, the front fender, it needs to come down just a little bit. So let's see what would happen if we do that real quick here. So that was just a tiny change of the front of the car. So this is the result when we just lower that big front fender just a tiny bit with maybe one inch or something like that. And this is what happens right here. You can see the difference when I'm toggling back and forth here. And it makes it look a little bit less like a Hot Wheels and more like a proper sports car. Let's quickly just go over the rear as well. And it doesn't really get a lot better in the rear. I don't know what's going on here because there is so much going on that I'm, I don't really know what the intention was from the designers here. We have these panels that kind of just ends abruptly here and doesn't continue or you know connect to anything down at the bottom of the car then we have this massive diffuser that as you can see in the side view sticks out and creates the 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 furthest end point of the car so that basically becomes the bumper and that is this part right here however i do like the graphics of the rear lights of this uh Fenier super sport better than the Lycan Hypersport. I think this is a little bit more stylish and it does have some uh, dynamic feeling to it because you have different width of the headlight itself. So it kind of goes from narrow here to a little bit wider in this point right there. But with that said, we are now going to take the front view and we're gonna try, <laughs> at least try, and turn it into something decent looking 
a little bit more confident and not all over the place with all of these lines. I still want to keep the, the overall design of the Fenrir Hypersport uh, Super Sport and keep the general idea that the designers had with this car. But we need to clean it up and we need to integrate each part of the design better in to create a car that looks like it was actually designed as a team effort. So with that said, let's get to work. All right, so here we are, of course, inside of Photoshop. To me, it feels as if it's a mix of a lot of different styles all blended into one single car. So what I want to do is I want to go with one of these styles and I'm going to go with the sharp parallel line style that we have and remove these kind of weird curvatures that are specifically visible in the side of the car right in front of the air intake and also the lower part of the car. If you compare that to the front bumper, it's like two totally different styles. So we need to decide and be go all in on one style. So I chose the more sharper style for this restyling here. So here's the thing, W Motors is a very young brand. They started in 2012, so I get that they are still trying to find their identity and experiment with different kinds of styles. But that doesn't mean that you can just let go of the fundamental proportions of the car, because in this case here, and with the uh, like in Hypersport 2, it looks like the fenders are too big for the car, and in between these fenders, you have this tiny little greenhouse that's almost centered in the middle of the car in, the, in between the wheels. And it just creates for a very strange looking proportion of the car. So it doesn't really show whether it's a mid-engine car or a front-engine car. So one thing that we could do here is to move forward the greenhouse, maybe a couple, a couple of inches, just to give an indication of what type of car this is. And it's also going to help with the dynamics and the proportions of the car. So I want to try and respect the original design here and not come up with something like a uh, Fenrir Super Sport 2.0. I want to respect the original design, but the biggest issue here is to try to connect all of these lines that we have all around the car and at least have a couple of lines that we can follow around the car that ties everything together. That's so important for a uh, unified feeling of the design and to make it look like it's been designed as a team effort and that everybody was working towards the same goal instead of having it look like five different designers worked on separate parts and then at the end they just smashed everything together into a car. What I'm really excited to see is this uh, 1600 horsepower electric car that they're working on at the moment that will uh, hopefully be released in 2021. We don't know now if it's going to be delayed. I have a feeling it will be, but that is a car that I'm really looking forward to. It's going to have four electric motors with a total of 1600 horsepower and a 0 to 60 time in 1.9 seconds. It sounds to me like this could be a Tesla Roadster competitor. So looking at this now, I just want to quickly show you that what kind of flow we created now compared to the original one. And it just feels like a more confident design when you have a couple of lines like this. It doesn't really need a lot of changes. It's just small details that always make a big difference in the cases like this. And there we have it guys, that's the redesign or restyling of the Fenrir Super Sport. I don't know about you, but I think there is hope for this car. We just need to get a little bit of line fluency in there and simplify the design overall and 
add some graphical details in the front, work on the lower bottom half of the car and connect everything together. As always, thank you for staying until the end of the video and that to me means that you enjoyed this video so that means you can give it a thumbs up and if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button and feel free to browse around the channel for more <laughs> redesigns just like this one. I'm the Sketch Monkey, thanks so much for watching, I will see you in the next video.